ni baye kene munu asuka mkwe chiri ya zero once again good morning good afternoon good night depends your time and your location you are joining us at eastern is 24 asim katuko kabe mwagoze na ye ise 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 all right kabo pini yoson if i were no bosi geta if i were tate lika manage ule ni anankeji nankeji kona aga all right the ojo clip in a jeno is one of our brother we are interview because eji mo yada na yo bia france every bia bia france please listen to this clip listen to this audio all right it's going to as in i will not talk much on it just listen to it and then leave us with your own comment on the commission below because if i do go too much you know but that if i now do go too much but can you go there but just listen to it and then leave leave us with your own comment on the commission below all right over to you sir racial you know ethnic racial profiling of a group of people in this country that have made more contribution i have said it on this platform i have no apologies to offer to anybody in this country Igbos have made more contribution than any tribe for the sustenance of this country and i give examples if zik did not do what he did in 1958 57 58 when the british were ready to give us independence they not said they weren't ready i will work almost first day let them go let us go on our own as he said no that particular insistence meant that we had our independence in 1960 the west would have gone the east would have gone but zig said no and one nigeria will be better for everybody and there have been so many sacrifices people have made along the way to make this country one and you see even more painful is that all all over we have destroyed the dreams of our leaders from chuko makadna zobu to brigadier general my malari to amadu bello to tafa belawa to gunewe to ifajuna to colonel oma table these are brilliant people who have killed and we have refused to dream that is why we are where we are we destroy the dreams of nigerian leaders and have refused to dream ourselves for the future of this country and therefore how do you look at it when we have refused to dream how do you intend to develop how do you intend to move forward how do we it is difficult to imagine what is happening in this country today and like if you go to corinthians first corinthians 8 11 it says you if you don't speak be mindful of what you say so that what you say will not offend the weak and when you don't speak it means there's a complete complicity mm. because the evildoers go on doing what they are doing because in this country we have a tendency for having an instinct for reflective uh, survival everybody wants some kind of survival and it is that rhetoric that has brought us where we are and to make matters worse in the eight eight years now trying to finish i think it's the worst government in terms of individual leadership this country has ever had so i don't know how this is going to be sorted out but i will say from the platform of my party i did not expect them to have done what they did recently suspending i know that was the we needed a period of reflection this is the time if i were national chairman i would have flown to protocol sit down with me i'm telling you call out the governors i mean i had said on this platform they had invited me to their meetings and i saw what they were talking about i didn't support article i said it on this platform i supported Mike because of my friend enugu governor of uh, enugu state because they said the south will produce a, a, a president all certain governors did agree both apc and pdp but when things happened the way they did and i said well, now the party has a candidate and we all turned to support article and uh, the river governor invited me to protocol now we spent almost two hours analyzing all so be that guy people take him for granted and i'm not one of those who take anybody for granted like he said yesterday the battle hasn't ended and it's unfortunate that the party is making it easier for him or for the battle to continue because i will stop this battle very easy it's easy to stop it if people will remove arrogance because arrogance of power arrogance of power that is the most dangerous thing you have in society we are this we are this we're going to what we're going to do look at where the party is now we have about 11 states from what from 20 something states how many years ago people should be reflecting on this how does it help us for tomorrow but Chief, people would have said that if it was easy to stop, perhaps it should have stopped before now, before the generation yeah, because to this. as I said, the attitude yes. to stop it was not applied. All through this period, we said, who will win? When you start suspending people, you are telling them that you have power, you have authority. And the matter is not being complicated. You have to go to appeal court to remove what uh, was done at the high court in Benway. And from there, you go to Supreme Court. That's all in PDP. We don't need that. We need some level of planning. Especially when you have an election. An election happening on the 15th of April. We need some level of strategic thinking 
not strategic powering who is uh, stronger than this who is uh, more resistant than this i don't i don't i don't like that stuff because where we are is not comfortable it's uh, absolutely not comfortable uh. all right so let, let's go back to the ethnic profiling which at this election seem to have yes. thrown up and uh you know uh, even though we saw the attackers in Lagos, for instance, and in some other parts of the country as people who are on the streets, who are called political thugs. But then uh, they, they said it is the hand of Esau that is being seen, or is it the hand of, the hand of Esau and the body of Jacob, or whichever one uh, it goes. Because people are thinking that it is the political class, really, politicians who are fanning the embers of this ethnicity, you know, uh, telling people, okay, if you go there, look at this person, you look at the, the face and the shape of the person, and then you're able to see where the person is from, and then you stop the person from voting. So what do we do about the political class which seem to be fighting the embers of ethnicity in the country at the moment. I will answer by simply making a phraseology. Nigerian politicians are involved in what I call toxic stash and burn politics. And it's very dangerous to stash and then at the same time burn. That's why I made a reference of having a reflective instinct and instinct towards self-preservation. And when you want to self-preserve, you can kill. You, you don't have a, any other resort than to self-preserve. And that's what is going on in this country. On this platform some two, three years ago, I mentioned something that we are gradually moving into Afghanistan. I think we are worse than Afghanistan today. All your stations, all television stations, newspapers, there's no day you don't run three, four hundred people killed. It's not a duty to hear that Nigerians are dying on daily basis, pregnant women, children, all manner of persons dying, and nobody appears to be concerned. But I want to say something following the question you asked. It is that today, about four or five years ago, a lot of nothingness had the temerity of purpose under this government. To ask Igbos to leave the north, give us a date to leave the north. This government, as I speak up to today, did not make any statement about it. In 2015, Igbos in Lagos voted for a Yoruba man, but not the lightning of the Oba of Lagos. And the Oba of Lagos had the temerity of purpose to say the Igbos will drown in the lagoon of Lagos. And Oba in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as I speak, neither the Lagos State Government nor the Federal Government of Nigeria had made any comment about it. And when I see the DSS talking about hate, warning people a few days ago about hate speech and hate that and you wonder where they have been all these years you see it is reflective because i come from a political family and i say it without apologies Igbos have made more contribution than any tribe in this country and i say it with one or two references in 1937 i have said this on this platform amadu bello ran for the sultan of sokoto and he failed his brothers organized and sent him to uh, guzo high court i mean magistrate court to be jailed for a tax evasion in 1937 my father was just about three or four years in the north then trading it was the best friend of Ahmad Bello who was an easterner somebody from Anambra state she for Congo now late who organized it was including my father eight of them contributed two two pounds in 1937 <coughs> my father uh, went to Lagos to hire H.O. Davis and then some other ones went to Anisha to get uh, 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 one Anisha lawyer who had just come back about Deguna and they came to Guzo to free Amadou Bello. But you see how the Sultanas, I mean the Northerners, or uh, the Fulanese work. Soon after that, they made him the Sultan of Sokoto and pushed him into politics. The latest history. No Northerner did that. That was the beginning of the NCNC NPC alliance that later after the Civil War, you heard of the NPP NPN alliance. Amadou Bello never forgot that. Never forgot that. So what I'm saying is that Igbos built a secondary school early 50s in Kano. More than 60% of people going to school there were not on us. This is love of country. Somebody who comes to your place to develop that place, live with you, marry your daughter, name your children are, are, on, on your language. They don't, you, you won't say that person hates you. But come to the whole of Eastern region today. As I speak today, you do not have any responsible, and I underline the word responsible, Yoruba man living in the East. Not one. If you see one, you'll be alone. Somebody, somebody, he's a teller. In, a teller. You won't know where he comes and when he goes. You will not see a responsible Nakama living in the whole of Eastern region. You will see a few that are selling uh, the road change. You will know when they come, you will know when they go. But when an Igbo man identifies with a community, he will buy land, he will build, he will develop, he will marry. What other commitment do they want us to give them in this country to show one Nigeria? What other commitment? And then when we want to exercise our franchise, it becomes a crime for you to vote, not even for a non Yoruba, but for a Yoruba that is not of their own approval. So what I'm saying is that. Maybe after all, the one was right that there was no basis for Nigerian unity. That is where they are pushing up. Okay. They don't understand where they are going to. Now, uh, this government said that after all the appeals for them to release in and become, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria told the ZFEP delegation that it's not a matter of, uh, it's a judicial process. The Nigerian judiciary has made a pronouncement, appeal court for that matter. And this government is still holding in and become. 
and I want to ask all progressive Nigerians, all progressive Nigerians, that we are the tipping point. Let them not push our people to the wall. Let Nigeria, whomsoever, constitute himself into Nigeria. Not put the boys to the wall. We will not take it anymore. We will uh, not all take right, it. All right. Let, let, me, let me come in here, Chief, so that I know that your emotions are heightened now. But let, let's come back to the reason why we are here having this conversation. And it is to find solutions and to make recommendations on what's the way forward. Um, I raise this because people like, ba, you know, Bayo Nanuga, you know, uh, Epsilomo, all those comments that they have made, people are expecting the president-elect, you know, to have come out to say, you know, we are on the path of healing, which he has alluded to, and these statements cannot hold. There was a question and colleague asked about the political responsibility of our politicians in this space. What can be done? in terms of you know bridging this gap because whether we like it or not we're still nigeria and the effects of this outcome resonates more with the young nigerians the youths that are out there and they never experienced the civil war a lot of people would always allude to but in order not to heighten the emotions that affected those those times how do we bridge the gap what's the way forward without you know necessarily looking at the, the aftermath of what has happened in terms of saying you know we, we have had enough of this yes it's happened yes it is still continuing but what must be done in order to achieve the unity that Nigeria well, This is why I said that the spoken word is even more dangerous than anything else. It does have a saying that it is the spoken word that is the mind that you do not see. Because if you have everything in your mind, nobody knows what is in your mind, nobody knows what you're planning. But once you make a comment, comments have been made in this country, like uh, Shetima said that Peter Du will be an evil president. I didn't support Peter Du. But he dare not make that kind of statement. Peter had every right to run for office. I said why his running would be you know prejudicial to pdp and it was prejudicial to pdp and to himself too